um, we are talking today of infection stones. Actually, infection stone is uh, an entity that is, uh, involves both the neurologist and nephrologist, and we can say that actually there's no question about the fact that uh, a strict cooperation between these two operators is, strict, is needed in order to succeed on this, um, say, relapsing pathology. So we know that uh, urinary stones, uh, infection stones, actually are the consequence of a reaction inside uh, the urine, that is urease, resection. And urease is produced by some bacteria, and the bacteria are responsible, like the produce, for example, are responsible for the uh, increased uh, supersaturation with respect to struvites and carboapatites. And these are the salts that are uh, historically are responsible for the uh, formation of the stones themselves. So what, uh, well, the flora usually um, that we, we find, in other words, is uh, uh, flora constituted the majority of the time by gram-negative uh, germs, but not proteus, and uh, mainly in Europe. In the States, actually, it seems to be also the gram-positive seems to be extremely well represented. So we need to take a look at the flora before facing a stone, because besides the characteristics that come uh, from the uh, observation of the CT scan, that usually is the uh, imaging that we use before approaching the stone, um, we need to also to take a look, at, for example, the pH of urine and the flora that is responsible of uh, uh, the infection that coexists with the stone. So how should we treat these stones? The stones are, in the majority of the time, stegon stones. And these stegon stones need to be uh, faced uh, with a combined approach, so percutaneous approach, and percutaneous and ESWL. Uh, the outcome says that uh, approximately 75% of the stones are cleared. Um, 75, say 50, 75 percent <coughs> of the kidney are clear by the stones. And at this point, if you have residual fragments, they should be absolutely eliminated. So this is mandatory more than what happens with the conventional metabolic stones. Um, in particular, if the fragments are more than 0.5 centimeters, it's absolutely necessary to uh, go back inside of the kidney in case you treat the kidney, for example, with a percutaneous approach and then a session on ESWL, you have to go back inside of the kidney in order to remove all the possible fragments that you can see. Uh, and it's documented that if you just rely on simple ESW, percutaneous treatment, ESWL actually, you have less uh, satisfactory results compared to um, the uh, so-called sandwich therapies, that is percutaneous treatment, ESWL, and new percutaneous uh, inspection of the kidney. ESWL has a poor role, but in some circumstances, that is when the stone area is about uh, uh, um, 50, 500, say, 500 uh, square millimeters, you can also treat the patient with the NSWL. And this is the case, of, for example, of the partial stegon stones of infection's origin or in the pediatric population. Uh, the patient should then be submitted to a regimen of antibiotic therapy. And in case this is not enough, this should be a long-term or short-term according to the result that you obtain and then if you have fragments inside or not. In case you don't succeed completely, you can also add urease inhibitors like acetohydroxamic acids. There are three randomized trials with the acetohydroxamic acid. It is a drug that is not is responsible uh, of a sometime a good success in the sense that it's in some ways symbiotic with the uh, antibiotic. But we must also say that there are a lot of side effects and uh, um, there are adverse events in 50-70% uh, of the patients and there are dropout of approximately 30% of the patients. So this is the base, actually, of uh, the therapy. And we also have to say that one of the main determinants of 
success, wing success of the therapy is the patient has uh, dysfunction of the lower tract, and this involves strictly the urologist, or is diverted. So this is the um, um, anatomical abnormality is one of the factors that all the series recognize as determinant for the success of therapy. So in patients who have, for example, spinal cord injury, or the patient who have diversions, or the patient even who had, for example, a catheter inside uh, because uh, they have uh, bladder or left obstruction, these patients should be considered accurately when you are dealing with them.